Kansas State fans, you would be nuts to not welcome Dylan Edwards back with open arms. I'm Pete Mundo. Heartland College Sports is where you find us covering the Big 12 Conference. Thanks for being here, and thanks for being a part of the show. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. If you're on the podcast, also, we appreciate you subscribing and leaving that five-star rating and review. So Dylan Edwards hits the transfer portal here uh, this week, and it's huge news. Right away, you're thinking, could he end up back in his home state playing with his teammate from when he was, you know, playing peewee football, Avery Johnson at Kansas State? And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, why not? But it's amazing the blowback that I've seen on social media from some Kansas State fans saying, don't want him. He spurned us once. I don't want to deal with this again. It's like, no, 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 no. That ain't how this works. This is the new world order in college football. I don't have to love it, and you don't have to love it. I don't. But it's the way the game is being played. And when a former top 200 prospect decides to leave Colorado and opens up his recruitment again, and he was once committed to you, you welcome him back with open arms, no ifs, ands, or buts. You don't take the approach of, you know, I don't really need him. What's the big deal? We're going to be fine. That's not how you approach this. You try to grab them and you try to get them in your program because Dylan Edwards with Kansas State, we're not just talking Big 12 title now. Although I guess if you win the Big 12 title, you're in the college football playoff, but we're talking potential legit contender in the college football playoff if Dylan Edwards ends up going back to Kansas State. Now, here's what's going on. He decided on Tuesday he was hitting the portal. That was obviously a huge deal. This guy played one season at Colorado. He started six games. Um, He became the first true freshman in school history to have 250-plus rushing yards and receiving yards in the same season. He set the school record for most receiving yards and touchdowns by a running back in a single season. 76 catches, 321 yards, 36 catches, for 299 yards. Think Deuce Vaughn when you think Dylan Edwards. That's what he is. And if you were to potentially compliment this guy in the backfield with the power of DJ Giddens and Avery Johnson's dual threat ability, could you imagine the nightmares for Big 12 defensive coordinators if you have Dylan Edwards at Kansas State this season and beyond? It would just be a perfect match for Chris Kleiman and this team for so many reasons. And I hope for Kansas State's sake it happens. I hope for the Big 12's sake it happens. You realize how enormous this would be? Kansas State would be, I believe, the heavy favorite to win the Big 12. And not just that, I think they'd be in a position to make a run in a college football playoff. Maybe not win the national championship, but certainly win a game, and maybe you win two. And then you roll the dice from there. That is not impossible when you get a guy like Dylan Edwards in the mix and you add it to the quality that this team already has. That's the kind of difference maker that he can be. But our Facebook page was littered with people saying, he made his bed, we don't want him back. It's like, listen, he was committed to you for a hot minute. Then he ends up going to Notre Dame, and then he pulls out of Notre Dame, and he ends up committing to Colorado when Dion goes out to Colorado. Whatever. He was a young guy. He wanted to make his own path. We know his father, of course, played at Kansas State. He wanted to maybe do his own thing. It wasn't totally sexy to stay in the state. He's a derby kid. You get it, okay? He got caught up in the bright lights and the shiny object over here of Dion Sanders. He was 17, 18 years old. It happens to everybody. But to his credit, he woke up one day or this week and realized, you know, this this really isn't what I thought it would be. And I think the big thing that screwed over Dion in this whole deal is it's amazing that Colorado kept recruiting running backs. Uh, the Mississippi State kid that just hit the portal uh, was getting talked about for Colorado. And then suddenly after that, 
It's like, oh, Dylan Edwards is leaving. It came out Monday that Colorado was hosting Mississippi State running back uh, Rashad Amos. And then a day later is when Dylan Edwards left. So I don't know if Dylan Edwards just felt disrespected by the recruiting of Dion in the portal for a running back. I don't know if Dion was welcoming in Amos because he knew that Edwards was getting set to leave. I don't know which one it is. There's no way to really tell unless someone tells the story at some point. But for now, you look at it and you say, if you're a Kansas State fan, not our problem. Not our problem at all. We're just going to make this thing work, get this guy back here, find some NIL monies, and roll the dice. That's got to be the goal if you're a Kansas State fan. That's got to be the goal if you're looking at this from a realistic standpoint of how do we get this guy here. And if you're Kansas State, and a guy hits the portal with this kind of ability and this kind of talent, and he wants to be with you, you know you're probably going to get some kind of a hometown discount, right? Because if Georgia comes calling, if if Alabama comes calling, if Oklahoma comes calling, he's going to charge them top dollar. I'd like to think there's a bit of a hometown discount for the Kansas State Wildcats and Avery Johnson, his buddy since he was a kid. And if you have the opportunity to go get that, if you're Kansas State, you would be nuts to turn it down. You do not turn it down. No ifs, ands, or buts. That would be insane. So uh, just open him with, welcome him with open arms, Kansas State. Recruit him. Now, I'm hearing a lot on social media, by the way, that this is just a small percentage of fans who actually feel this way about Dylan Edwards, who actually don't want him to come. They're like the loud minority of people who are just like, we don't need them. I hope that's true. I can only go off the Facebook comments and some of the stuff I see on our message boards. And I hope that you'll join our message boards. Uh, Just head on over. They're free to sign up. Click on the members forum tab at the top and you'll be all set. So I, I hope it's true that it's just a sliver of the Kansas State fan base. Because if it's any more than a sliver, then people are losing their minds. And there is no reason to be losing your minds over this. You should be cheering this. You should be celebrating this. And then you should be saying to yourself, how do we get this guy in the mix? How do we get him here? How do we get him to be one of us? You combine Avery Johnson, Dylan Edwards, not only the talent's tremendous, but you are talking about a potential storybook situation in Manhattan that will be talked about for generations to come. That's what you're potentially setting up here. Two homegrown guys, teammates, you know, as young as peewee football, coming back together to potentially bring Kansas State some type of national recognition. Could you imagine? You're going to be sitting there right now as a Kansas State fan, depending on how old you are, telling your grandkids about this. That's what this could be. I'm not predicting it yet. But that's what this could turn out to be. So love it. Chase it. And if that Wildcat fund needs a couple extra bucks, maybe consider a donation. Although I will admit, I hate how this NIL fund stuff is getting run, but I'll save that for another show and another day. I'm Pete Mundo on Heartland College Sports. So appreciate you being here and joining us for the show. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you. Go Big 12, hit the subscribe button, and we really appreciate you. Have a great rest of the day. Go Big 12.